Hold on yet? Not yet. Okay. Well, let's get started. I have, does everyone have a copy of the agenda? And I'll talk at once. Hold on. You might lose me. I'll come back though. I got it. Okay. Okay, can I have an approval of the agenda for tonight's meeting? I'll approve it. I'll second it. Good job, guys. Good job. Okay, um, disclosure of any disqualifying interest in the nature thereof. That's a new word. Yes, it's much easier than pecuniary. But uh, the integrity commissioners. Wow. I know you guys finally got used to it and we change it on you. <laughs> okay. okay, well, there we go. Anyone have anything to declare? No. No. Nope. Okay. okay, approval of minutes from our last uh, meeting that we had. I think we are good. Okay, so if I can get some people to approve. Uh, okay. I can't remember our last meeting. It was the 24th. Your special meeting. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, I approve it. Can I approve? Nope. If you yeah. don't, I will. Okay. Okay. Uh, financial report. Carol? Uh, um, sorry, again, I don't have uh, a bank balance. I don't get to the bank because we do a lot of our stuff right from us now. So I forgot to get a balance. That is fine. So I don't have anything new to report at this time. Okay. Mm -hmm. No rental updates at the moment. And just a from some previous minutes. Uh, we have the COVID lead from Amanda. Did everyone see that email? I did. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Is it weird that it was in my lunch bag? I know you sent it. I got it. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any questions or is everyone well versed in it? I'll just let everyone take a turn to answer so we all know that everyone's on the same page. Uh, my understanding is just basically stating that the only way that we can be open is to have food or agricultural purposes kind of to allow those things to open. Other than that, we have to be closed. Am I wrong there? I like uh, I think these are just updates though. Right. Well, no, it, it went on to describe that the agricultural purposes and the food rentals, so the- Agricultural and food production. Businesses are allowed if they produce food and beverages, agricultural products, including plants, including by farming, harvesting, aquaculture, hunting, and fishing, process, manufacture, or distribute food, beverages, crops, agricultural products, animal products, and byproducts, and support the food or agricultural products supply chains and the health and safety of foods, animals, and plants. Wow. Right. There's a lot there. Some important notes that impact the community halls in Clearview. If your hall board chooses to remain open for these two, so if you decided to choose to remain open for religious ceremonies and food premise right. rentals, then those are left. 
Yes, and we're not open at this time. Uh, no, currently. So. I think we could have still been open for like just plain rental of the space, but yeah, we chose not to do that. Right. I yeah. Okay. Do I have any questions about that? No. Yeah, so I guess I. Oh, go ahead. The horticulture wanted to rent it for, or the, uh, yeah, the horticulture society I'm wanted to rent it for the one day, which Amanda said would be okay. Uh, okay, we're going to bring that up in our oh, new business, yeah. right? Yeah, we'll cover that in new business. Because we need to. Okay, um, so we're going to move on to the hall discussion on AODA uh, and moving forward. Um, there's a lot that I think once we've had time to digest, it's going to need um, more attention or maybe more follow-up questions. Um, we received a document from Terry regarding Oh, good Lord, what pages did he got? He sent us the whole document again, page 130. Does everyone have a copy of this report? Um, or is anyone want so. me to send? A <laughs> okay, let me just forward this. Seven. If you look in the body of the email that Terry sent us yesterday or day before, he clips sent a basically a clip of that page. And then he says, here's also could go to the Burnside report to find it on page 130. Did he send it to everybody yeah. or only certain people? No, didn't. Just okay. to us. Yeah, because uh, I I don't I don't think he sent me just a clip, Mom. I only have it's in the body. Oh, I, I like it. Oh, like the copy paste. Okay, I see. Like it's yeah. He said I copied here as well, and then the that's the modified. So I reached out to Terry because the presentation it seemed like to give us lots of details on the full FADs. But I, I couldn't seem to narrow down what the modified was so like on that presentation. So I asked him to sort of give, so this is what we're talking about. He's actually given us a list of what is neat required if we chose modified FADs. None of my emails. No, I have it, but no one's emails are loading on my thing. Can you, can you forward it, Mom? Like, oh, here, here, here. Oh, here. Reply all. Is that it? Yeah, not working. So yeah. Okay, I just sent you guys the clip of what he's saying is the modified version um, so we, we can start just from the top here so they're saying the first thing they're going to do is a single story north edition which is a universal washroom so this is the one that i think is going to need some follow-up questions um we do already have two bathrooms for our space that only holds 70 people um, the addition seems like we need a lot more information, like what's happening to the furnace, what's happening to the water tank, like how is it going to be accessed through the hall? Because, you know, if it's taking over that back room and turning it into a new one, then how are people going to get to that washroom? And now we have three washrooms for 70 people. Like, is there an opportunity where we could just convert our two bathrooms into one universal bathroom? Or... Um, there's just some more questions that I have before $78,000 is spent on a bathroom. 
I don't know how much we can give and take with this modification list. Like if this is set in stone, like you have to do what is on the modified list or can we um, maybe like cookie cutter from the list? Like if we're not meeting full fabs anyways, uh, is it something that we have the opportunity to say, okay, no, we think that adding another bathroom for $78,000 is a little extreme. Um, then we might as well just do a big addition like it. Or well, where is it going and why is it at the north? Like. I was going to say like um, to save time and to save money, would it not just be beneficial to meet say 80% of the modified fads? Why wouldn't we look at just putting an addition onto the one side, which would give us a fire coated kitchen and we could expand the bathrooms to meet those requirements as well as put in the new for the water fountain that they want to put in and things like that. Like if we're going to spend that much money, why spend that much money just to kind of put a band-aid on until we need a bigger band-aid. Yeah. yeah, so that's going to be a question that we have to ask because that could cost more money and then maybe they'll say, okay, well, we're not gonna pay for part of it. Like, cause again, we don't know what their plan is. So this is kind of what we need to go back to them and say, okay, we look at it all. Like, obviously um, maybe we'll take, you know, like a minute here, was anyone in favor of doing full changes like I know there's probably no way that the board will be able to afford to do full changes because I think it's 25 percent um that we would have to pay and there's no way we will be able to fundraise that amount well right here in front of me I have the full FADs they're saying would be altogether six hundred and four thousand dollars is the yes Township would give us four fifty three, and we would have to do one hundred and fifty one thousand dollars. Yeah, would it even cost us a hundred? Like, I mean, we'd probably be up there with building costs and everything, but like, would we be close to that if we just decided to do an addition? No, that's for well, like, that we we won't even like we can't really guess on this addition because we have no basis to know how much it's going to cost. We don't. All they have is north addition, so we don't know if it's a ten by ten square. We don't know if it's twenty by fifteen. Like, I guess there would be too much unknown to even like go and start discussing this edition without having to get quotes and see if this is something that the town's gonna wanna pay. I think today we just need to decide like, what do we want to tell Terry um, into regards to like, do we want to do full? Do we wanna do modified? Do we wanna do nothing? Well, and then was yeah. there not the third option of, sure. of he had suggested that we incorporate the town hall and at the board and then take on the AODA ourselves, would there be a possibility of being able to take down the cost? Because all these costs are based on bids and their estimates. And I feel like they're very inflated oh, I'm sure. either way. Yeah. So like, would it not be economically efficient to be able to do that ourselves there is the option for that um in my opinion i don't think anyone on the board has the ability the knowledge or the time to invest into this situation it could take a year to incorporate and then you know we're all going to be on the line and then someone has to manage the project someone has to be there for construction like someone has to make sure that they're doing everything properly like i don't it's not in my house to do or in my time allotment um to be doing i don't know if everyone else is feeling the same way in regards yeah. to that i mean like it's a big project to undertake but as i understood it if we incorporate it as a hall board we could have community donations so for instance zach being an electrician could do the new wiring on the new part and that wouldn't cost us anything above and beyond just material because he's donating his time where if we do it through the township they have to put out a formal bid they have to have you know offers put in or whatever that's called that whole tender process and then decide who's the best out of that because the only thing at the end of the day now you you've purchased the hall as a board and now you're running this yep. as a business so we're working full-time jobs plus we're running the hall as a business that's right and you'll be able to get your own contract, which will be almost half of what the township can get. But there's going to be a lot of work to do it. 
Right. And also the town will be providing the amount that they're, if, if what they were planning on is if they end up going with giving us 65% or 70% of whatever the number was, that will no longer be there. So maybe we'll save money on the contracts. However, now we are having to put all this money out and our bank account is not enough to sustain this renovation on its own. And we're in a time when we can't do any rentals, we can't do any fundraisers. Like we are scrimping by just to get donations as is from the people of Brentwood. And I don't, I, on, I honestly, from my own opinion, like I don't have the time. So if, um, like if everyone, like I, I love that everyone wants to do that to save money, but honestly, like everyone would have to commit to being available so much more than what we are currently doing. Yes, I mean, um, even to say, to make a decision of what we wanna do, I honestly think we need to ask the locals how they feel about it, because we go through all of this. And really personally, I would say if, there was, if I was gonna be involved in any type of renovation, it would only be the modified. I, I agree. It does, I agree. That's that's hard hard yeah. It doesn't make sense to put six hundred thousand dollars into this building because it would never ever no. get recouped. No, the rental and halls and festivals and stuff. Um, even the two hundred and sixty-two thousand for the modifieds. I think we still need to have some commitment from the community because practically um, it was like ten years from now. Let's say we decide I'd like to really get off this board, or five years from now, or two years, whatever. Is there going to be enough commitment for a new board to even start to take over our need? Is there going to be local support in doing the rentals because we come up with $66,000 as our share on the market. Yeah. So we have to be able to earn that money. We have 30,000, let's say, but we still have $36,000 we have to come up with. So I, mean, I think it's, we have to turn this to the community and say like, we need your help because we go through all this and nobody supports it. What was it for? Sure yeah. enough. And that's yeah. and that's a big thing is trying to get a community meeting together to see what how much support you have with the community behind you. Yeah. And it has to be sincere commitment from them. Like, you know, I'm yeah. sure people go, oh no, yeah, you gotta keep the bread with all, you gotta save it, you know. And are they support? I don't know how we're going to do that. And I, like, it's not a commitment, it's not a decision I want to make on myself because no. I don't feel that's my right to say, you know, yay or nay. Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a big commitment, and it's got to be a commitment over 10 years plus. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe we need to think first before we sort of make a, get an answer. How could we reach out and try and get some response on, you know, from what to do, what we should do? Uh, we could do a mail out. Um, I'm not sure how effective it would be. Like we can do a, a poll. Uh, we could try to do a survey. Sometimes they have like survey monkey. So you can fill up like a questionnaire. The problem is it's gonna have uh, in conversion. Like, how are we going to get people to actually fill it out? Like, do we send them a survey in the mail and then we include a stamp and they just mail it back to us? Or uh, like we can't really do door to door currently. Um, yes. And we can't phone people. So I'm not really sure the best mode of reaching people. Like maybe we put a sign up at the hall that says like, we're looking for your input, like call these numbers or send us an email. Take one of these surveys that we put in a plastic Tupperware on the ground. Like, you know, Kristen, sorry, I've been muted. Ah, not ignoring everybody. Right. Um, yeah. And just what, and again, hearing from two individuals, the, the word seems to be out there. Um, the only feedback I'm getting is everybody that's over 60 right now, those two individuals, but you're right. And 
I think we have to put it out to the community before we can make any decision and uh, that they get that they watch that video and and we go from there. And I think use the sign, use social media. We do. We just follow our checks and measures. And if anybody comes back to go, you didn't do that, then we have our plan and we show them that we did accountability. Sorry for your luck. Like, if you're upset that we went a direction that you didn't think was was what your opinion was, you know. Is there somebody that could give us advice on how, what is the best way? To... Well, I'm, I'm sure like, we'll just have to maybe, um, um, oh, I'm trying to think. like, even if we just have an email survey and we could put it together on a postcard, we pay for the postcards, we take them to the post office, they mail them to everyone in Brentwood, uh, like maybe it's $500, I don't know. And then I'll, then we hope that they're gonna take the time to like write to us and say this. Um, we can have like a bin at the hall where people can just come pick them up and fucking drop them off or whatever. And the other option is like, if you know someone in Brentwood, like call them, get a hold of them, like see, like what they have to say, like um, obviously we all have connections somewhere in Brent with someone and they may be able to call someone that they know, like a phone tree, old school phone tree and, you know, encourage people to get in touch with us and let us know what they're thinking. Because in the end, if they don't want it, then what are we doing? And I think maybe it's going and what causes it is put up on the sign do you want to save our hall and make make that our i mean that's to the point and that's going to get people that have invested interest to say oh my god we're going to lose our hall what do we have to do like i don't think we should say oh do you want interest in what's going to happen but no to the point because bottom line it is about saving our hall right and maybe maybe miraculously somebody comes up with yes right you can't you can't make this decision on your own you need the community backing on this so Lorianne is right put something straightforward and blunt that you need their help and support on this yeah, because I mean, it is serious. I mean, if we decide no, we don't want to take on this. We've made that decision. And the whole, then I'm sure the township will say, okay, then it's done. Like, now we can use that money to build the, the Collingwood Bridge. And we can, you know, uh, they have lots of things they'd love to spend that money on. So, yeah. So, if we, I don't think it's going to be all, all on our back. This is a huge decision. Mm -hmm. We're not just deciding whether to paint lines on the pavement or to build a new kitchen. Yeah. You know, and maybe, like I said, at the small halls meeting, I said, we could, you know, when we get back to small halls again, then this, if we do go forward with the renovations, then that could be launching. We've got lots of new people in the area. Mm -hmm. And and they probably don't even know what this hall is, to be honest. Right. Yeah. And and that's where I think push it through, um, to do due diligence that makes the community aware that change is coming and we need to sell postcards. Is and something then, we can reach back to the township on Kristen that because Amanda does a lot of surveys. I mean, it's with um, Survey Monkey, but I'm sure she she should have some good input. Um, I believe we can also use Survey Monkey on our own. Um, okay. I mean, we can reach out to us reaching them. Um, if we need assistance with that, like, like this is the township never asked us to contact everyone, 
so this is something that I think that we're wanting to do, then we should handle it. Um, if we do something electronic, somehow get it out there like a survey monkey. But then I think the mail out is important too for people that just um, don't have access or ability to, you know, be online or be on Facebook or, you know, any types of social media. These that comes in the mail um, and they can. No, sure, like, since there's a lot of people we have contacts. Because John has called me, um, and maybe that's something we could ask him to do. And I, because he's he's quite, we know his passion, and it's still there. He says we've put a lot of years in there, and so say, hey, John, we need your help. We would need his honest responses. We don't like we would need him to somehow. We wouldn't want him to skew people's answer. No. Mm -hmm. you know? Like, no, I know he is. If he got something printed, had it in an envelope that's sealed, he drops them off at his contact's house and says, please fill this out. There's a drop box at the hall and please just drop it there at your earliest convenience. We're just asking them to be back by the end of April. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? If we've sealed them, right. he has no way to skew their answers other than his answer okay. that nobody knows who's okay. reading it. Yeah. Then yeah. I think so we what, can have the conversation with John at where we're at. Uh, it's somehow I don't know how, what that's like, and it's not just be me. Um, a conversation say, John, we need to step up, and and we help with that, but they have to step up for the right reason. Okay. You know, so, um, so again, like that, we're not going to do this because we have. You're going to reach out to everyone. Um, we'll make a um, you can email it out and uh, it or not, and we'll have to meeting in regards to what we want to talk to Terry about with the modified um, set. I we are all in agreement that we cannot afford a full set ever. Make money. not a way that we're going to go. Um, there's some questions that we want to make sure we get to Barry so that we can get some you know, like, do we have to do all of the modified pads or is it something that we can look at? Like, um, there's the drinking fountain is one of my concerns uh, because, as most of you know, like, I have never drank water from the hall. Time or we don't know the infrastructure happening under the ground. Like I would highly suggest that we don't drink the water. Um, so I wouldn't want to encourage people to drink the tap water. I mean, there, it, I think they test it. I'm sure it's fine. Sorry, Chris. I have a question about is the devices. Does anybody have a clue what those are or why we need to install them in the hall? I'm not sure. Uh, well, I'm assuming that something they include for every hall. They just add items. Um, look at uh, everyone has it listed in the hall. Another one to talk about is. Does the Brentwood Hall need this? Obviously, it's a fad that needs to be met, and we totally understand. Our venue is used uh, very sparingly. You know, one room is it something that we could put off for a few years, or is this something that we have to do right now? Yeah. Yes, I think that's I think that's an AOD compliance. To for anybody that's hearing impaired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So sorry, is this the, these are all requirements that have to be met by I think the date is 2025, correct? Yes. Um, I think so. 
just um, wondering if that's another question that we should ask whether or not the, I understand that they want to try to get all the major renovations done in the next year or so because it could take years to get them all done but I'm just wondering whether or not like as Kristen you suggested whether or not there's certain things we could put off for later and certain things yeah. we do now yeah and I remember Terry mentioning like so one of the line items here is accessible picnic tables including a path Remember Terry saying like we would do that or we would just get rid of our picnic tables. Well, there's $5,600, we'll just get rid of the picnic tables. And if people wanna bring a folding table to use like, so I'm hoping there's room for some of these. I totally understand, let's do door widening. Like if we need the power door operators, of course, like um, the signage, great kitchen rental, we knew we wanted to do anyway. So wonderful that is. And fantastic. There's just these few lines of things like we more details on what this north edition is, like where it's located, is it taking over, how do we get to those washrooms? Do we need two washrooms for a building that only holds 70 people? Like can we just put a wash and a universal? Um this is listening guys, we in the hall board don't have events anywhere. So it's not open to the public, it's by event. Uh, so I don't know what changes having to provide listening devices which we were told. Um, in the drinking fountain, like do we want to help people to drink the water? There's more questions that have regarding that. But I think that uh, once, if that's something that we could start by getting to Terry and saying, okay, so we've looked at your halls, like are they just gonna shut the halls? So we, I, I want to include everyone in Brentwood. Yes, it's going to take a long time to get all that information. So right now we need to provide the, the town with our plan is to do this. And then we wait to see like, and they're going to say to us, you know what, we've planned it, we're going to do modified, you know, you're going to be in charge of things this much. That's when we're going to be able to look at everything. And they're going to go, Oh, okay. You have survey results. Great. You know, only 10% of the people that answered want this hall to even be opened. So maybe and the Brentwood Hall can be closed. Yeah, so I think that's what we have to definitely convey to them. That I mean it can't just be, you know, the odd here and there. Yeah, yeah, no, keep it. We gotta like I somehow we have to make sure that this is this is a commitment from everybody. Yeah, we need we need something put with contact and get them talking in town. Sure. Okay. That's great. Um but we didn't address the fact that we need to contact Terry with our recommendation. We're gonna so that, that you makes sense. Want... So we're going to recommend that we would be interested in looking at the modified fact yeah. Yeah. with yeah. some possible changes to the list that was provided, or we would require a further meeting to discuss line by line what the plan is in regards to it. And then in the meantime, we will contact all the people that we can contact. We'll try to get hold of everyone in Brentwood and get their opinions and also be able to look at that data for when the township makes a decision on what they're going to do because they could say we can do modified and that's great but we need to come up with it how much is it Carol do you remember it is we would have to come up with 66,000 so we have to come up with 66,000 I think we only have 40,000 in the bank they're going to make another 20,000 or 30,000 in the bank they're going to come up thirty thousand dollars and we want, that's when we're gonna make the decision. Nobody in this town cares about the hall. How are we gonna make 30,000? Or yeah. you know what? We had an overpouring support to keep this hall going. So let's do anything that we can to make $30,000. Right. Well, and of course they are saying that there is financing 
you know, would be details that they'll determine. Like, I don't think we have to come up with a cash right away. No, but at some point, Carol will have to come up with the money. So it's best just to plan that we need to make sure that we're going to have the support to raise the money. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, do you so, want? Are you going to reach out to Terry and? I think you and I will work on drafting the email, and then uh, I'll send the email to Terry to follow up with all this. Okay. So for the minutes, are you willing to put forth a resolution? Could the resolution say that at this time we would? I drafted one if you want to be asking. It. Yeah. Okay. Please do. Okay. <laughs> be it resolved that the Brentwood Hall board hereby recommend the modified FADS option with potential changes moving forward based on community commitment and support. Yes. That sounds wonderful to me. Sounds good. Sounds I good. I <laughs> Perfect. So sorry, was that moved by Melanie and seconded by Erica? Oh, Erica, okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Perfect. Sorry, we're all so excited by that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh is everyone good to move forward to new business? Yes. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna head to new business. Uh we are currently going to be talking about the horticultural um what is that a plant sale so i'm going to give it to aunt Lori. she was the uh, first point of contact regarding it i don't think her phone's working properly i don't know oh, she's not on okay no she uh yeah she's not on i don't think Okay, I was worried that she just muted it by accident. No, I don't see her um, at all. No. Nobody sees her. Okay, let me put up. I'm under pressure here. Uh, I, I know. Okay, I found stuff to. Okay, I got it. Okay, so this is what we received from 22nd of them will be there to sell and they will keep people apart and require mats. Can we use the parking lot at the hall? We won't go inside. Who should we ask about this? Not sure who to ask really. Well, word for word. Um, see, and Aunt Lori sent that out. And we got a response from Amanda. Okay, so Amanda says, thank you for the email about the Brentwood plant sale. Yes, the sale could continue as it is part of the exemption. However, regardless of the color level of the reopening, there are some requirements. How would you like me to communicate this to the Brentwood Hall or such as I as the property be responsible for ensuring that a volunteer is present and a safety plan would need to be developed and then on a framework for reopening. Which so we can Go ahead, Bill. Um, which would I think I clicked on it. It was just um, basically about, uh, I think it was the same stuff she it's sent the on, the it's, it's the Ontario government page is what the link is for. So I went back to um, when we when we approached at Christmas time about doing that drive through idea we had with hot chocolate and cookies and stuff. So I, cause I thought, well, we can't just say yes. And we have to understand what it is that they would, we would have to actually make sure that they are doing these things. So, um, so we kind of were do, thinking the same idea but ours was gonna be food. So that's kind of why we gave that one up. So at that time uh, she was saying, please encourage mask wearing by your volunteers. Masks are mandatory. Um, when physical distance is not possible. There, there has to be contact tracing. It's required at all events and gatherings. So volunteers need to collect the name and phone number for the driver and the number of people in the car. Um, and uh, contactless payment. 
So we have to come up, they would have to come up with a way on how they could do that. Um, and they have to enforce a one directional system. So enter here, exit here, uh, and do not get a vehicle. So that has to be kind of well marked. Uh, volunteers should possibly, when possible, should be at the same. Volunteers, when possible, should be at the same station to reduce any close contact. And then she goes on about food and having a food handler, which they're, we're not doing food. So they would have to, like the safety plan they would have to come up with would have to involve uh, making a directional drive through. Um, they would how they would also have to have volunteer that's collecting their information, uh, and then figure out how to do the money exchange thing. And then of course, then one of us, I guess, would have to attend to make sure all of this is being followed. Well. So I don't know where we go from here. Does anyone have any suggestions? Even allowed to under the new lockdown and stay at home order have this plant sale? Well, it uh, won't be until May. It won't be till later in May because we can't tell nothing can plant plants until May. Which could still change too, right? But I, mean, I guess um I mean, my suggestion would be in lockdown 3.0 at this point, but we seem to be back here again. So who's to say another month of it won't happen? Yeah. Yeah. So at this, what would be best is the safety plan would need to be created. Um, but I think it would be best if that safety plan is put on the horticultural society. So maybe if anyone knows, I don't have Liz's email, but if we can connect Amanda and Linda to the, um, together, I don't know if that's an opportunity that Amanda can explain to them how to do the safety plan. I don't know if we have to do it, but someone is going to have to volunteer to be there on the day. Uh, I don't know what day it is. The weekend. <laughs> so so do we ask someone from the town to be our representative there as part of the board because i'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 of us have plans for the mainland weekend if we're not locked so, down if we're not locked down yeah so that's the thing so it says that a volunteer needs to be present so someone from the board that's our job is to do that okay. um Kira, where are you getting the 22nd just so i know what you're uh, I don't see that date. It was in the email that. Yeah. No. I, uh, wasn't it? You read yes. it? No. Yeah. Well, who's, who's saying yes? I am Melanie. Thank you for the. Where do you see it in? There we go. Okay. Now I'm going all the way down there. Yeah. So it is May 22nd. I mean, the only other option is that we can say to them, no one's available on the 22nd. So you're going to have to hold it on the 15th or the 29th or the 28th or like. Okay. Well, let's, I'll see if I can get, a, I'll reach out to Linda and, and just talk to her about what we're looking at. Like, I mean, okay. And then it sounds like if you can con get her in contact with Amanda and see if they're able to work out their own safety plan. Right. Um, and I don't know about this volunteer, maybe because they're a part of the horticulture society that works out of the hall. I don't know, maybe there's a way for them just to be in charge of that on their own. Correct. But let's let them talk and um, let and them take the ball for a bit and figure it out on their own. And then we can step back in and figure it out. Well, then they could, you know, sort of share the safety plan uh, with us. And then yeah. so that we're aware of what they're what they're doing and 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 then i guess i just reiterate with amanda like when you're saying you are responsible for responsible for ensuring that a volunteer is present as the property owners you will be responsible for ensuring that a volunteer is present so it doesn't say necessarily a board member um so maybe we just would yeah I have okay. a potential right. resolution for you i'll see what else Okay, perfect.
I have uh, be it resolved that the Brentwood Hall Board hereby approve the proposed plant sale contingent on an approved safety plan and volunteer availability. At what? Sure. Sorry. Wait, what? I Sorry, know. did I cut out? Yeah. Okay, yeah. be it resolved that the Brentwood Hall Board hereby approve the proposed plant sale contingent on an approved safety plan and volunteer availability. Sounds great. That works. Okay, that works. Okay, uh, anyone have any other new business? No, no, no. Small halls? Oh, shoot. Yes, sorry. <laughs> small Halls. Okay, so Small Halls Festival. Uh, we sat in on that meeting um, that they were trying to find out what everybody uh, was wanting to do. She had, um, you know, sort of different options. We could still go ahead with a physical festival like we normally somewhat did, maybe with modified events. Uh, but at this point, what she's trying to do, or we could do virtual things, anything. So it sort of opened up to anything. Um, but at this point, what she's needing to know from us, and we told her we should have an answer today, um, because she would start applying for grants, um, is whether or not we uh, feel that we would do something, that, that, we, should, that we think it should go ahead. Um, that being said, if one hall decides they don't want to do it, then it's a no for the whole festival. All halls have to be in or not. So we have to just base it on our own personal feelings. Um, we have to keep in mind that if we are running against, probably all these protocols will have to be followed. Um, they also could. You know, your event needs to be planned so it's fluid in case it just gets canceled. Um, so is it, you know, feasible, do we feel to do? I vote uh, take I another know. break, another year. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of, and trying to follow all these new rules. It's so heartbreaking to already be going through this lockdown, all this quarantine stuff, struggling with current protocols that we have to do to get to the point where we might be a week away from the festival and then we turn around and we're in lockdown again. Like, I'd rather just say like, no, we respectfully say no because we don't want to struggle to plan all this, put all of our time into planning then to just have it turn around and said no, where we can wait until all this COVID stuff's a lot less, a lot more people are vaccinated, protocols maybe aren't as strict, and we can look at redoing it again a year later and maybe be able to put more time and effort into it. I understand. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, I totally understand that. Um, my concern is that we haven't had a rental in like 300 days. And we're talking about doing modified, like we do need to find a way to bring some money in. Um, we should have a so plan that, other... that it isn't adaptable for any circumstances. My idea was like a picnic. So we would sell picnic baskets, like with food. And if, you know, we're open, then we could have, you know, circles in the lawn and people can come have their picnics and we just have a local musician playing. Or if it's then we're in complete shutdown, it's like, okay, you curbside pickup, you come pick up your picnic basket here's a map to some hiking areas or a beach or like oh it's something I, I have, that we could adapt i have a quick idea that i actually participated in last week um the rotary of barry held an event and it was uh, sitcom trivia and one of the local restaurants in town um offered up services because a lot of um restaurants are having issues right now so you buy tickets online and I think your ticket was $15 to participate in it. And then you buy your meal through the restaurant online um, for $25 a person. And then you have your meal at home and you participate in that trivia game. And it was a really great night. John and I both really enjoyed it. And it didn't, and nobody came in contact with anybody. And you just, it was curbside pickup at that restaurant. And it was a way of supporting local while also they raised $15 per uh, household 
because you could do your whole household if you wanted to. Um, and then the $15 went directly to that charity. That's, That's a good idea. idea. Uh, another, another idea that was offered up was there would be just a virtual 50-50. Uh, um, and then it would get, so it would be like one big pot, 50-50, uh, people could purchase their tickets online, whatever. Um, and then it would get divided um, amongst the halls. So you have to have a, a lottery license for that. Singhampton does have a, their own lottery license. So they would offer up using their license um, and then it would just be done as a small, small halls festival fundraiser, da, 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 and then it would go through their license and then they would donate um, the money to be allocated to all the individual halls. Like, uh, so there's a way of doing that with the lottery license. So that would be a totally hands-off fundraiser that they, they discussed. Um, so that's awesome. Yeah, I think there's opportunity for, it's not gonna be what we're used to, but I, I don't wanna be the hall that says no and kind of ruin it for all the other halls. Like maybe another hall is gonna say no, but I think in October, yeah, we might be locked down again and maybe things are gonna change but maybe we will be able to do something and it could be quite scalable, like only what we can handle, like within regulations, but it's something that would bring in money because we're not going to be doing any rentals this year. So we're going to lose out like the horticultural always used to donate money to us because they would go and have their meetings there. So we don't have that money, but we have no money coming in whatsoever so the opportunity to band together with the other halls might drive some more traffic or if we're doing something virtually like there could be opportunity there right i agree so do we want to maybe say that we would be willing to uh and i told like i said that you know if we were to do something to me it would be one event, it wouldn't be a three days of events or two days of events, it would just be one event we would do um, just because of the, all the protocols and, and everything that we might have to be dealing with and whatnot. And um, so do we say then we would consider still going forward at a very modified, whether it's virtual or um, a single event, um, but you know, what do we, how, how do we convey that answer to her? I think a single day event. I mean, we could even do like a driving concert. We might was or just doing one in May. So I mean, there's people that are obviously figured out how to do drive-in concerts, or we could do a drive and maybe our parking lot's big enough. Um, I think. I think what we could just say is that like, we are willing to try. Yeah. We would like to participate. We are not 100% sure like in what capacity we will be participating in, but we are uh, going to do something and it'll be scalable. Like if we have to cancel that the last minute, then okay, we have to cancel it at the last minute. Like it's going to be fluid. Right. as much as possible. I agree. I mean, do we really have to say what exactly we are willing to do or just that we are willing to participate? I've We're just with a resolution. I think yeah. she was willing to participate or not. Like, okay, <laughs> Kayla, what do you have for us? I have be it resolved that the Brentwood Hall Board hereby commit to hosting at least one event for the 2021 Small Halls Festival. I agree. I second. Sounds good. Wonderful. Right. At least then you're uh, participating and trying to get some revenue back. Yes. Right. Yeah. I mean, and she did say if we were all in the midst of renovations or like, I mean, that's also, she has that in the back of her mind that something like that could be canceling it as well, but or totally modifying it. Yeah, but we're being fluid and we're working with 
and being open to opportunity. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, okay. I have lost my agenda. Is it gone? There we go. Okay. Uh, anyone have any more new business? Uh, no. Nope. Okay, so the next meeting is scheduled for the 18th, but if we're going to try to do a survey and all that stuff, um, is anyone available on the 28th? There's a Wednesday, the last Wednesday of April. Available? Oh, in like three weeks? Yes. Okay, all right, sorry, just want to make sure. Uh, yeah, I'm available. <laughs> Check your calendar. Check your calendar, there, girl. I'm checking. <laughs> Already pants. Oh, you know what? I should check my calendar. Oh, nothing going on. Freezing. So, was that everyone? Did everyone answer? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't yeah. answer. I, I in the chat but um i'm moving on the 31st so i may not be able to make it but yet it sounds like you guys will still have quorum okay danielle you good. you're good okay so we just need to hear from aunt Lori, but let's tentative put the 28th okay. and then i uh, will go from there all right so german is eight o'clock p.m all right yeah. I should be available that night. Perfect. Oh, okay. <laughs> if I can get to Okay, so uh if you can get here. Okay. We will talk on the 28th. All right.